So yeah, we, we would just like to encourage people to come up on stage to share what they're going to do when they go back to work, either later today or um, tomorrow or on Monday. So hands up for those. I'm actually, can I expand it a little sure. bit? <laughs> Uh, I'm personally, uh, I would love, if you're, if you're um, inspired to share what it is that you want to do, then that's cool. But um, if you're also inspired to just to share what a highlight was or what something is that's still unsettled in you mm. that you feel like you would love to see addressed that hasn't been addressed. So rather than shape what we want from you, um, I'm actually more curious about what your actual true experience is and help us get feedback so that we know what your world is. <laughs> Does that make sense? And so that could be a highlight. That could be, wow, I, you know, I really wish this would happen and I, it didn't and I'm feeling like I just wanted you to know that. So um, it could be, uh, I'm mean, really inspired to go out and do X, but, um, but I would expand yeah. the scope so that we um, get your truth versus just get one little piece. And um, we're going to start by example, so you don't have to. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to we're we're going to model it, but um, but we want company. So. Oh, we have one company. <laughs> Who's chosen? Did you? Okay. Yeah, I did. I just the purple-haired lady. And, you know, I'm here because I'm facing this. Okay. Fear of public speaking. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jacqueline. Do you want to choose the other three, or that. is there anybody else now sure, that they I know what they're hands doing? Up. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna choose you, just because you look so nervous. <laughs> uh, let's see. This man with the, I'm not sure what's on your shirt. Buddhist shirt. It's a Buddhist shirt, okay. You have to choose the Buddhist shirted man. Don't you? Uh, I saw someone put their hand up with the man with the glasses and the white shirt. And we'll know. So you can just come up. Sorry, come up on stage. And if we have time, we'll see how all this rolls. But we'll have time. We might push them yeah. off and let some other people come, come on. on. Yeah. Uh, but we so know we have time for uh, four. And if we, if it looks like uh, we have more time, we'll have more invitations. Since we know it's also Friday afternoon, so we have to respect that. Um, so Sharon, since you have the mic, do you want to? Um, begin, or would you like me to begin? Oh, I'll begin. Oh, why don't you That's begin? Right. <laughs> That's right. Wow. We were joking about it backstage. Uh, so my experience here, um, wow. A couple things that come to mind. Um, I, I think there's highlights, and then there's questions. Um, I. I don't know if you guys, I really enjoyed the parts I played. <laughs> uh, the three interviews I did. <laughs> um, often I'm backstage, so I don't get to watch, and I'm working with speakers and stuff, I don't get to watch every session, but um, I really enjoyed the interviews that I did, and I really enjoyed the different expressions of personalities. Like Casey was young, had a lot of energy, had a lot of passion, which was just so cool to be around. And then, like someone like Eileen is much more thoughtful and quiet. And, and I love being in an environment that has different expressions of how we can be so we don't think it's all one way. Um, something that I'm left with um, that I feel like is kind of unsettled, which is uh, kind of how, does, how do practical elements show up that we can actually bring into our, our lives and work. And so, and I know that's been addressed somewhat, but I feel like that's still a question that I'm having. Um, and it's like, I would love to give somebody, all right, here's five things you can talk to your manager about that can bring in a different quality within your, you know, in your company. Um, so anyways, that's, the, that's still, I feel like it's kind of unsettled or curious or a question in me. That was great. <laughs> Thank you for being my role model. Um, I know conferences like this and events in general are actually a huge amount of work. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, all of you. Yeah, and one of the things I've really appreciated here is how it didn't appear to be a whole lot of work. <laughs> you know, it felt seamless and organic and things were just arising and that was very beautiful. And almost a part of that for me 
uh, which has been a part of the way I've tried to attend conferences for a long time, began many years ago. It was at a, a wonderful conference in San Francisco, just as this has been a wonderful conference. And uh, extraordinary speakers and amazing illuminations. And for me, the big takeaway happened almost accidentally. Mm. When I was backstage, I was walking by a group of people in the center of which was the writer Alice Walker. And I overheard Alice Walker saying, as I get older, the thing that matters to me more than anything is goodness. It's good heartedness. Mm. And I just walked on. <laughs> and that became my big takeaway wow. from this conference. And I think it's often like that. And so I've really appreciated these kind of magic moments, uh, meeting some of you in Washington Square Park at lunch today, or you know, just these different moments that just arise because we have come together. Uh, one of which, which was really great for me, was I shared a cab with Robert yesterday, leaving um, from the High Line. And on the taxi's little screen, the news, came um, the statement that the Pope was unhappy because uh, for those people going to see him in Central Park, Central Park was now demanding tickets. You had to get a ticket in order to view, I think it's just his motorcade going through. So it said the Pope was not happy about the tickets. And I said, well, I, I understand that. I wouldn't be that happy either. And then Robert from the High Line said, well, I'm thinking about the grass in Central Park. <laughs> You've got to understand what these events do to the, the place, you know? And I realized, oh, right. He's thinking about it from a completely different point of view than I would ever inhabit. And so that's the wonderful thing about our coming together. What I always find as I teach, as I meet people, is a kind of basic struggle, and I don't know that it will ever be resolved, but I think it's something we need to keep talking about, and that's like the relationship between our inner work or inner transformation, the uh, structure of our organizations, and then the outer, more global mission. Because many times people will tell me I'm, I have a growing commitment to inner transformation, I really see how I'd like to change the world, and my organization just sucks. You know, and there's backbiting and there's meanness. Or it may not be that that's the weak link, but there's something. And I would love to see an ongoing conversation mm -hmm. about that. Sure. Yeah, so I'll model. Um, what's on my mind right now is um, I, I just need to raise a bar. I mean, I just need to show up. I thought I was showing up. Um, after, is it JC, the guy who? Uh, Casey. After Casey's speech, I mean, I, I was just left feeling there's more I need to do. And I'm not comparing myself with him. What, I'm, um, what, what I connected to was just his, his drive. And I felt that he ignited that voice in me saying, Jacqueline, you're here to do something bigger. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's where I am right now. I'm here to do something bigger. Yeah. So that was exactly where I was going to go. But um, <laughs> so I don't sound that I'm stealing that. Hopefully I can uh, put it a little differently. So uh, my name is Katie Elred. I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'm here representing both Progressive Insurance, trying to make a change within my organization, but I also teach uh, children mindfulness and meditation and blog as the mostly mindful mommy. And <laughs> <laughs> what, that, that's exactly what hit me about it, is it just takes you know, one person to make a difference, and so you know, I was working, doing my part, but just being here with all of you, and I mean, I'm meeting people in 30 seconds and making these amazing connections, and I can feel that something's gonna come of it. And just being in a place like this and seeing what's possible when people connect, all I could feel when I heard him speak was, I am supposed to help with something larger. I'm, I don't know what it is. Is it keeping things like this going during the year in local, you know, exactly where we are? And I just, you yeah, know, that there, I need to think bigger and do more, and that I can, and it's possible because the people who have been up here on this stage have been absolutely amazing and 
cheers to you guys for bringing them all here for us to see. I'm just so thankful and grateful to be a part of this experience and Thank you. and for the chance to get up here because I am terrified of speaking in front of people. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Michael Butakavli. First 49 years of my life here in New York City. Uh, I encourage you to consider this idea. I came to this conference with zero expectations. And what that led to was uh, contrast. Last September, I went to a uh, uh, Conference. Michael, can you hold it a little closer? Yeah. I went to a conference at uh, Harvard Medical School. It was stress and resiliency, which we dealt with a lot. However, a major contrast, this was mostly physicians, and they were there for their mind, which was wonderful. We got an amazing amount of relevant information. But the people that I've talked to and I've sensed here are for your heart. Mm -hmm. And that's a major, major difference. I've never been associated with a group like this where the people are concerned about other people first, not their careers, not their income, not their position. And that's an amazing aspect. And I say thank you to all of you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Samir. I, I live in Harlem. Uh, and. Uh, I thought when the discussion was about three marriages uh, by David White, I have a fourth marriage, which is with New York City. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's like having a bro bad girlfriend, you know. <laughs> um, and I think after 13 years, she loves me back now. <laughs> um, so I was so happy about this conference being on, a, on the East Coast. I was on a two conferences before on the West Coast. And so that everybody's coming to our hood, uh, that was great. So um, what stood out for me is this convergence of, 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 a, of a concept that came between you know, Casey Gerald and Rana Das talked about this concept of, um, of losing. Um, you know, we in the business world, everything is about achieving, everything is about gaining, everything is about potential, everything is about all, be all you can be and strength and power. And those words are very, very sort of ruling the conversation. But half of life is, is losing. Uh, there is a credible amount of uh, capacity in people who are capable of not achieving, of business deal not going through, of company not growing. And uh, so, so how do we converse about this other half of life in the business world? Uh, that, that for me is always a question because people don't want to go there. It's under the carpet, like a dead horse under the carpet, I say. <laughs> You know, um, because that's where conversation about resilience comes in, about wisdom, uh, when we become real. Uh, so I was going to ask Eileen, like, how do you teach your leaders to lose? You know, to have 3% down and 5% down and company not growing and things being cut. You know, how, how do you do that mindfully? Mm -hmm. And how do you do experience sadness and frustration and anger fully as a human being? as you experience victory and joy and success. And so I really like when Casey said, like you got economy, making a business deal for everything might not be most important, mm -hmm. mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And when Das said, you know, like I was able to be defeated in a business environment, be defeated. And it was just really powerful to, to, to witness that. That was, mm -hmm. it's important to me to help me build bridges with business people as I do my coaching work. Thank you. Thanks. Like you, I'm terrified of public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think that's why, you, that's why you chose me. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Rita Sadwani, and I work at Verizon Wireless. Um, I came here, I was here last year, and um, <coughs> There was a quantum change in my life that happened after the conference. So this time, it was a no-brainer. I had to come. And it's my personal story, but there have been a lot that has been going on in my life. And I've always wanted to make a difference, make a purpose. And 
Casey and Das listening to them, it just kind of made me realize that everyone's got their bag of shit that they have. And you just have to deal with it. And you have to find creative solutions. You have to find creative solutions around it. Because it's not that the shit that defines you, it's what you make of it. And that to me was powerful. And like so many people said, it's by example. Because you read about it, you you know, lots of um, stories about it, but it's when you see it, mm. and you see people who've changed their life, even with the bag of shit that happened, that makes, <laughs> that's inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> that really makes the difference. Yeah. So thank you again for thank all you. of you for putting this together. Thank you, gu thank you guys, um, thank you. So we have time for four more people. So thank you guys. And if you want to come up, put your hand up. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. Hi, yeah. hi, hi, hi. <laughs> I'm going to choose you just thank because you. your hand is enough. You have a mic in your hand. <laughs> Do I have to go first? OK. Um, my name is Sarah Clark. I live in New York City. Um, I was in corporate America for a while as a writer for TV, and I, I quit. I listened to my uh, inner voice uh, who, who told me to do a yoga teacher training, um, and I teach now full time in New York City and internationally. It's completely changed my life. I teach meditation as well, um, and it's been an honor to be here. What stood out for me um, as I really teach and I'm teaching a retreat in Costa Rica about being fearless was, um, I don't know who the speaker was, but uh, you can't be courageous without experiencing fear. Um, and for me, there's so many things that um, I wanna do, and there's one thing in particular regarding travel. Travel just lights me up. Um, I feel most connected, most alive. Um, and I really want to take a year off and, and travel and teach, mm. and it scares the crap out of me because I feel like I'm so plugged in here. My career is blossoming here, and to let go of that and trust that I'll be okay um, is really scary, but I think you have to practice what you preach, and I want to be an example of showcasing that Listening to your intuition is everything. You're always being guided whether you fall or not. Well, actually not even that. I feel like um, you're always caught in some way or another. And even if you do feel like you fall, there's always a rich lesson to be learned from that. So that's my takeaway. And so my challenge now is to say, I might not have you know, $20,000 in the bank to do a, a year-long traveling immersion, but I'm gonna do it, and I want people to follow me, um, and I wanna be an example of what fearless living looks like. So that's what I've taken from this. Like, I've gotta do this trip. Wow. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, and when it happens, uh, I'm Sarah Clark Yoga. No H on Sarah, no E on Clark. Um, <laughs> so feel free to follow me, because I've got to do this. And I want to share my, my love of, of meditation yoga with those that um, don't have access to it around the world. Thank you. We had two mics. I don't know how yeah, we, have, we have one mic over there. So. <laughs> I'm LeGray uh, Lumpkin, and I actually uh, live here in New York. And I, I reflected back because I went to the first Wisdom Business you know, event um, two years ago, and I was actually scheduled to go last year, and I was in the process of relocating back. I had left New York from Minnesota originally, left New York, and I had moved to the West Coast and was moving back. So my time, my first day back on the job for the day after the conference, <laughs> and it was so chaotic I didn't get to go. But I shared with Soren that we ran into each other as I was leaving last night. I left my corporate job. I was, I've been in marketing and advertising for over 30 years. Um, and I was, at, as some people would look and do look, did look at me, uh, I was at the pinnacle of the advertising business. And I walked out um, a month ago. And the Wisdom 2.0 event in February, I came back to my office and and I had joined Wisdompreneurs um, online, and there was an executive meeting where we, I'm the culture queen, right? So I you know, brought the fun committee and 
um, brought those things to the, to the agency here in New York that didn't have those things. And it's the largest agency in the world. And it's tragic because the attrition rate is almost 50%. It's 46%. So I said, before we get on this call with all these employees, let's be excited because they're going to lead. We're leading them. They're following us. And I had written a note to my boss, who was the CEO, and said I was so grateful for everyone's authenticity. And I wrote it to the entire executive team uh, for everyone showing up and, and addressing the real problems and the issues that were in the room and in, on the team. And her comment back to that was the following day, right as we're getting ready to go live with 500 employees, um, was, you know, that was a really great note that you sent out last night. And, you know, when I, by the time I got to the third paragraph, I was afraid you were going to go spiritual on us. <laughs> and I literally, within two hours later, I mean, I took it in stride. Two hours later, I was sitting in that exact boardroom crying. I mean, literally tears rolling down my, my face and, and emailing, texting the founder of Wisdompreneurs saying, this is a really brutal re-entry into the agency world and I need some help. And he said, post it on wisdompreneurs on Facebook. You know, so I did and I had an outpouring of people, but I physically wound up getting sick to the point that I was on short-term disability. I had wrist surgery. Um, you know, my light, I was brought to a screeching halt and made the decision and, and created an org chart in May without me at the, at the, I'm not there. And my boss said, well, where are you? And I said, poof, I'm gone. And she said, well, where are you? I said, well, this isn't working, and I don't know, but some other role needs to happen. And I ultimately uh, got away. So, so that is a, a bit of this, the, just the reality. And, and I, I told you, I launched mindfulbusiness.guru. So I have, and it's you know, to bring awareness into the advertising world, the marketing community. I don't even know what it looks like, but I just know I have to do it. The one thing that I felt, I have a little granddaughter who's seven, and as I'm looking up at the stage and I'm seeing it's Wisdom 2.0 for business, like Wisdom 2.0 for education, for schools, and you're probably doing something with that, but the teachers can't come probably and sit here and, or even have the money to come, and so I just throw it out to the universe as something I would love to see happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> oh, am I on? You are. Hello? Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm quite nervous. Um, my name is Dawn Lorenz, and um, first off, what I'm taking away is definitely the heart and to lead by example. So it, I had no expectations coming in here, and leaving, I'm definitely more encouraged to spread the message of mindfulness. Um, how I got into this is that I was in corporate America for 20 years, and um, Got very, very sick because I was one of those people that you had to work 24-7, had to do the best, had to do this, and, and I ended up suffering from migraines and going to doctors, and, and like they said on the stage, I was one of those people that wanted to commit suicide. So doctors didn't help me, and the only thing that helped me was um, mindfulness, was meditation, yoga, and also acupuncture, acupressure. So fast forward five years, I quit my job. I'm teaching yoga. I'm bringing it into corporations. My company is, you know, it's only a year old, but I'm spreading the message and I want to help people that were like me who didn't think they had another chance or didn't think they were going to make tomorrow. And um, I just want them to realize that there are tools that can help you to get through those stressful times. So thank you for having this conference. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, it's funny, I've yet to meet somebody who said, I've yet to meet somebody who said, you know, I've been, I was a yoga teacher for 20 years and I came to your conference and I decided to go into corporate America. <laughs> <laughs> so one day, one day. Thank you. Joe, yeah. Hi, I'm, uh, my name is Joe Burton. I own a company called Will, W-H-I-L. I'm in from San Francisco. I would like to thank you for inspiring me to come up and share my bag of shit. <laughs> so, um, I grew up um, in Pittsburgh, and uh, within our home, um, alcoholism and drug abuse was kind of rampant within our family, and um, uh, it was a very tough beginning. I lost an older sister to drugs. I lost my twin sister to suicide. She was a heroin addict. Um, my father was unemployed from the age of 45 until he died at 65, and 
um, what happened in my life that changed my life was uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, who were embracing mindfulness in a lot of their clubs, um, got a hold of me when I was nine years old and really changed the conversation in my life mm -hmm. into one of hope and courage and dreams. And um, I owe everything in my life to them. So fast forward, um, uh, I've had a just tremendous success in my career. I was a COO of a, a global, two and a half billion dollar global advertising uh, agency and uh, have traveled the world, have just had tremendous success. And so much of that I never enjoyed uh, because of what goes on in my head. And so I discovered mindfulness about two and a half years ago. And um, what's happened for the second time in my life is uh, um, I've had someone or something change the conversation in my life. And mindfulness has brought uh, back that hope and energy and accomplishment and got me back to who it is I really want to be. So I'm really grateful for that. And um, the two things that come up for me here at the conference, there are two things we're never taught in life. You're not taught in high school, you're not taught in college. The first is how to be a parent, right? <laughs> Which is a pretty big deal, <laughs> right? Someone should teach us that stuff. As a parent, someone should have taught me, I can say that. Um, and uh, the second is um, how to self-regulate, how to control your emotions, how to deal and cope with stress, right? And so I'm just inspired by what this community is doing, by what you've created in this community. Um, there are so many different people here helping people to discover that and to change the conversation in their lives. And I think that just means an, a tremendous amount. So thank you. And the second thing I wanna share is um, on the edges of that, I've had a couple of interesting conversations over the past couple of days and the community and the conversation and the connection is so much of like what happens here and it's amazing. But I've had a couple of interesting ones where in conversation people say like, well, we're doing something in schools and we're competing with them, they're doing things in schools. <laughs> and we're doing stuff in companies but we're competing with them because they're doing stuff in companies. And um, I think what we should all leave with is if, if you're doing something to help people, you are not competing with anyone. And, um, so thank you. Anything, was that it? <laughs> was it uh, that, I thought that was a pretty good ending. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, okay, I thought there was an and, but that's okay. <laughs> so actually, that is a great ending. It so is. our um, timer is amazingly on cue. Mm. And so I want to thank, um, we have an awesome team, Grania, Kat, Katie, um, I don't know where they are, but we have an awesome Wisdom 2.0 team I want to thank. I want to thank Jamie, who's our MC. Um, oh, she's down here. Uh, I want to thank Skirball and all the staff and the people who are behind the scenes that we don't even see, and they're making sound work, and they're making lights work, and all those people that exist. Um, and the speakers and um, yourself. I saw someone put their hand up with the man with the glasses and the white shirt. Yeah. And we'll like, so you can just come up, sorry, come up on stage. And if we have time, we'll see how all this rolls, but we'll have time, we might push them yeah. off and let some other people come, come on. on. Yeah. Uh, but we so know we have time for uh, four, and if, we, if it looks like uh, we have more time, we'll have more invitations. Since we know it's also Friday afternoon, so we have to respect that. Um, so Sharon, since you have the mic, do you want to um, begin or would you like me to begin? Oh, I'll begin. Oh, why don't you That's begin? Right. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Wow. We were joking about it backstage. But, um, but we want company. So. Oh, we have one company. <laughs> Who's chosen? Did you? Okay. Yeah, I did. I just, the purple haired lady. I'm here because I'm facing this. Okay. I'm sorry, Jacqueline, do you want to choose the other three? Or is there anybody else now that they know what they're doing? Sure, I saw some hands up. I'm going to choose you, just because you look so nervous. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, 
this man with the, I'm not sure what's on your shirt. Buddhist shirt. Buddhist, is it Buddhist shirt? Okay, you have to choose the Buddhist shirted man. Don't you? Uh, so yeah, we, we would just like to encourage people to come up on stage to share what they're going to do when they go back to work, either later today or um, tomorrow or on Monday. So hands up for those. I'm actually, can I expand it a little sure. bit? <laughs> uh, I'm personally, uh, I would love, if you're, if you're um, inspired to share what it is that you want to do, then that's cool. But um, if you're also inspired to just to share what a highlight was or what something is that's still unsettled in you, mm -hmm that you feel like you would love to see addressed that hasn't been addressed. So rather than shape what we want from you, um, I'm actually more curious about what your actual true experience is and help us get feedback so that we know what your world is. <laughs> Does that make sense? And so that could be a highlight. That could be, wow, I, you know, I really wish this would happen and I, it didn't and I'm feeling like I just wanted you to know that. So um, it could be, uh, I'm really inspired to go out and do X, but, um, but I would expand yeah. the scope so that we um, get your truth versus just get one little piece. And um, we're going to start by example so you don't have to. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going we're, we're gonna to model it. Uh, so my experience here, um, wow. A couple things that come to mind. Um, I, I think there's highlights and then there's questions. Um, I, I don't know if you guys, I really enjoyed the parts I played. <laughs> uh, the three interviews I did. <laughs> um, often I'm backstage so I don't get to watch and I'm working with speakers and stuff, I don't get to watch every session but um, I really enjoyed the interviews that I did and I really enjoyed the different expressions of personalities like Casey was young, had a lot of energy, had a lot of passion, which was just so cool to be around. <laughs>